Okay, all. Uh, welcome to the W3C Technical Working Group call for uh, Thursday, 9th of June, 2022, uh, talking about the membership proposal. Um, those who uh, were present at or have viewed the uh, previous meeting will find this familiar. We will once again be going through the membership proposal document, uh, but for a, a new audience, uh, in particular, including Gladstone, who have been contributing all the way through. Um, and GLL. <laughs> sorry, and GLL, of course. Uh, <laughs> How to make friends and enemies so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, the Gladstone technical contribution, shall we say, has been quite considerable. Um, um, not the best save, I admit. Um, anyway, continuing on, I will I will stop talking beyond introducing myself, Timothy Hill of the Open Data Institute, uh, and asking everyone here to uh, introduce themselves and their organizational affiliation, uh, just in the order in which you appear on my screen. Uh, so can we start with uh, Phil, please? Uh, Phil Allen, Senior Developer at uh, Gladstone. Thank you very much, Phil. Uh, Nick. Uh, Nick Evans, I'm in. Thank you, Nick. Andy. Uh, Andy Gordon, a senior product owner at Gladstone. Thanks, Andy. Uh, Matthew. Matt Davies from Sports. And finally, Stephen. Yeah, Stephen Winfield from GL. Thank you very much, Stephen. Okay, um, I'll just briefly share my screen. Um, Uh, so many tabs to choose from. Okay, that is the document. I was actually hoping for the presentation. Okay, so um, there's an important um, point of order uh, anybody on this call who has not already formally joined the W3C group for Open Active, if you could do so at your earliest convenience, that would be great. Um, just following the, the link on there, um, or just Google W3C uh, Open Active, and that should take you there. Um, the reason for that is that if we want this uh, standard to be uh, ratified by the UK Data Standards Authority, um, we need to demonstrate that there's no outstanding intellectual property claims on it, that nobody's going to step forward and say, actually, uh, we've contributed to this, we consider it copyright us. It's to everyone's benefit uh, for that ratification to occur. Uh, so if you could possibly uh, sign up formally, that would be fantastic. Um, well, with that uh, point of legalism out of the way, um, thank you, Nick, for posting uh, the link in there. Um, I will hand over to uh, Nick to walk us through the document itself. Uh, Nick, do you want to share screen, or should do you want me to? Uh, yeah, sure. if you yeah, I, I, if I share, that's probably um, okay, great, a lot easier. Yeah, I can do yeah. that. Perfect. So I'm just going to stick my desktop on. Can you see that? Uh, I can see the W3C community group. Yeah. Excellent. Well, that's a uh, following on from your signposting there, Tim. We can uh, double up on that. Uh, great. So yeah, on the W3C group, if you're not already on this list, uh, some of you may well be already, uh, then, um, or not, uh, then um, yeah, if you go to, uh, to here and click on join this group, that's the thing to do. Um, so you want to go to, I'll go down here and you want to go to join or leave this group uh, and then you want to request an account and then you can, you can do that um cool this is the specification we've been working on together so uh the purpose of this call is to just run through some key points around this document to just familiarize yourself re-familiarize yourself with the document um, and then just and, and also get a sense of what your plans would be in terms of reviewing this, um, and uh, and and so the idea that we get to a final draft here where everyone is happy with it and it, it you know we think it it is meets everyone's everyone's needs um, and that it is viable and um, good quality and all the rest of it. Um, so I thank you for people, anyone who's watching this uh, that's, that's already uh, as well, that's already contributed to the, the comments on this document. Um, so as this is the kind of final draft 
uh, we want to be uh, kind of looking at, well, I mean, any comments are still valid right at this point. If someone says this doesn't work at all because I've just realized then it's good to know that now. Um, but hopefully we should be at a position where we're, we're kind of, we've talked all this through at length, so it should just be um, tying up loose ends and anything. So you'll notice that this follows a very similar, um, oops, uh, this follows a very similar form uh, to the, the, the specification, the open active specification. Um, and that's because it will become a document in this format, uh, but it's obviously a Google Doc still to make it easier to comment on. Um, for anything that you uh, you do see in there. Um, and Tim's already mentioned, it would be great to uh, ensure that you've um, joined the W3C group. Uh, that's, a, that's a key point of, of, of order, which he's already covered. Um, and yeah, as you go through this doc, if you spot anything that you think, oh gosh, shouldn't have that in there, or I've got a question, you know, just do just do click and, and, uh, and comment on anything you like, um, and uh, you can go through the comments that way. Um, the other thing to do when, you, when you're when you looking at this is if you show the outline on the left-hand side, this is quite a good way of navigating the doc. Um, you'll be familiar with the sections because we've covered them previously, possibly, um, uh, although maybe it was a while ago. Uh, so these sections uh, are the, numbering hasn't changed from the previous versions it's just that we've put it in this kind of format now um, to go through um, so we've include included the scoping section uh, of what's in and out of scope which is, you might remember from the previous document um, these are the things that this does uh, it tries to do them in the the minimal viable way so the simplest way that we could figure out between us that we could get this done uh, that meets all the requirements and so hopefully that is the case. If there's anything in here you think is more complicated than it is, than it needs to be, do shout, let's make it simpler. Um, I, don't, I, I, I think we've, we've done quite a good job of refining it so far to uh, remove anything that, that is unnecessary. So hopefully this is the thing, this meets these requirements and it does so in, a, in the most straightforward way that it can. Um, uh, it's also, doesn't include a few things that are out of scope. We've talked about this before. Um, doesn't include payment processing. Doesn't include um, the uh, management of memberships that are paid for by direct debit, etc. cetera. Um, doesn't include managing bookings that are not made through the broker. So, you know, all bookings on the account, only broker bookings that are managed through the broker um, and we obviously cannot get pricing for every member. We'll only get pricing for members that are have entitlements that the broker has allocated. Um, so these things that we've, we've talked about before. Um, we've also got uh, some dependencies. So this uh, we're proposing what we call the customer accounts API. This sits alongside the open booking API. You'll be familiar with the open booking API. As we've as we've been um, we've been refining uh, and 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 having implementations of open booking. Obviously, we're getting really close now to open booking being finalised itself um, as a proper 1.0 rather than a uh, CR um, through all the great feedback from all the great implementations that have been happening. Um, we're starting at the beginning with customer accounts API. Uh, there's been one implementation with Legend so far, um, so we'd be looking at the the next few implementations really informing anything here that we've missed or that, that we can learn um, and, and therefore improve this as we go, um, but not expecting anything massive to change following the, this version that we all agree on here, um, unless we find a problem when we're implementing that's you know, a showstopper for some reason. Um, but it's nice to know that it's possible to do it once um, because we've done it once already with, um, with Legend, as I mentioned, and also um, there's, there's an ambition to build a reference implementation of this, uh, which will help us as well in figuring out any, any gaps, as soon as we're all, we're all happy with it. Um, the .NET library has already been updated to, to include some of this functionality. Um, there's, there's more to do in there, but um, certainly it's, it's, uh, it's, that, that work's already, already started and there's a version that's, that's live 
uh, in that in that library at the moment, which has got some of it in. So uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of that's kind of the the introduction section um, at, at a high level. Um, does anyone have any questions about that so far? Are we expecting anything different? Um, is this does this all sound good? Seems right. Right. Okay. Fantastic. Andy, how are you? I know you've you've kind of been out and come back into this. How are you how are you finding that is there quite a lot of context to catch up on again, or have you been in this already? I've already been in this already. I've, I've been reviewing that document that's been shared with uh, everyone active uh, for Westminster in particular. Okay. Um, so yeah, maybe a conversation after this is, has that document been reviewed since this has been updated? Just to make sure we're, we're, we're all dovetailed together. Oh yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, the references in that document to this should still work because the numbering hasn't changed um, and the content of this document hasn't changed substantially in terms of the actual things it's specifying cool. so one, one, one would complement the other yeah very much so. Fab. thanks fingers crossed um so you might find a broken link or two but i apologize if that's the case it should be the numbering's the same so uh i'll uh, but i can go through actually that's a good point we can go through that that document and check that everything still lines up uh, when we finalize this make cool. sure yeah thank you no worries Great. Okay. So, uh, so that's good. Um, and, um, and then basically just to talk you through the different sections in the document, um, as we've got them here, um, there's some, some examples that we will improve a little bit. Um, I mean, these, these aren't substantive to the, the spec, uh, they don't have any, any impact on the spec, but it might make it a bit easier. If we can put some better diagrams in to show what we're talking about here. Um, we've got the, the sections that we've been going through, uh, on the, the previous calls here, um, they've been kind of tightened up and uh, various issues addressed. And so, uh, yeah, we've got standard creating a customer account, authenticating the existing account. Um, you probably remember this from before. Um, viewing and updating uh, the contact details, barcodes and updating barcodes. Um, I should mention there's a few boxes in here which are in yellow. These will be removed from the final version of the spec. Um, they're just in here to capture guidance and conversations that we've had and links to any issues that are related to the content in case there's any, any kind of questions on the detail there. Um, so, uh, yeah, we've got the uh, in associating an entitlement with a customer account, uh, displaying entitlement pricing restrictions at the browse stage and online booking and these reference reference later sections as well um, and we, then we've got the dependent account work referencing that github discussion that we went through on that call that talks about the rationale behind the dependent accounts um, and how that that was proposed to be uh, to be done and we've got the booking on behalf of as well uh, with the relevant discussion and uh, the proposal here about, about how that that should be done too so this operation section really just covers at a very high level the different aspects of the specification um, that, are, that are being discussed in, the, in, in here. And then the model and the endpoints are the kind of more technical bits that go through exactly how those things happen. So the model format is, as you're probably familiar with from before, it's got all the, uh, the, the fields in here, very similar to in the, in the booking spec, there's a model section and you can see that there's all the different parts of the model are specified. So very similar format to that. Um, and that covers all the different fields uh, across all the different models that are needed to, to make this work. Um, and then endpoints, the endpoint section, these are the actual endpoints that need implementing. Um, the validator will be updated to handle all these models, which should help with the implementation. Um, really could be speeding that up quite significantly um, because it'll be easy to check that everything is as it should be according to this spec. Um, and then the endpoints themselves um, are where the test suite should be extended to include uh, tests for each of these to make sure that they're implemented as, as per this, this specification. 
Um, and so again, as we've gone through before, but these are all the endpoints that do the various things that we talked about. Um, so updating customer details, searching by email address, um, uh, initializing a, uh, a customer, a new customer, uh, setting access passes on the customer. Um, and uh, deleting access passes, that's the barcodes. Setting an entitlement, deleting an entitlement, uh, um, the specification for the list of entitlements that can be exposed, and uh, a feed of customer account updates, um, which was, I think that was um, suggested by, uh, by Debbie originally, and um, seemed to have broad agreement on that call about that being the preferred to polling uh, as an approach for getting those updates, um, and that's and that's it. They're the they're the um, they're the endpoints required to be implemented. So those ten, um, and then the open data feeds. Uh, there's a, a few uh, minor changes to the open data feeds to facilitate this, and they're specified in the next section. So four different changes to the open data feeds to in, to include things like um, whether or not you can use customer accounts um, API with, with this particular seller, uh, any restrictions around the session um, to do with membership, such as gym induction required or gold members only. Um, entitlement eligibility type is about um, uh, making sure that it's clear which offers are related to which entitlements, um, which I know we've gone through in detail previously. Um, and uh, late cancellation policy relating to the um, uh, if someone was to cancel late and it's a uh, customer account booking, then that's obviously uh, there's a penalty that might be incurred. Uh, so that's that's how that's handled. Um, and then uh, that, that's the feed changes. And then within the open booking API, because obviously this sits alongside the open booking API and built on top of it, there are some minor changes to the open booking API. Um, these include uh, making sure that if a customer is authenticated, that um, you can go through and make a booking uh, using just that customer account, uh, that attendee information is, is specified. Uh, if, it, if it's a guest and it's not specified if it's a customer, because obviously they already have that detail. If it's a customer account, you don't need to specify the attendee details twice. Um, and the, uh, the errors that might be related to uh, customer accounts, uh, bookings, um, um, and uh, specification for those. Um, some information about communication. So expectations around what should be communicated to the customer from the booking system. Um, and uh, Oh, and some and additional authentication errors that are these are more technical, technical errors, um, and how cancellation um, works from both the booking system and the broker side, um, and, uh, and and what the uh, expectations are around that. Uh, there's also the uh, the the health questionnaire information about where that goes within open data. Um, and some of this as guidance, as I previously mentioned, will be removed, but that's just there for as, a, as a reference. And then the final section, section G, is, is Open ID Connect. This is how to configure Open ID Connect so that it can do all the things that are further up in the document um, to allow for this kind of uh, um, login box to be presented and for the relevant details to be, to be clearly articulated in that, in that box. Um, and the different scenarios, there's the three different scenarios that box can exist in, which they're very similar. So there should be, a, you know, minor changes to the, the GUI depending on, well, where the where the users come from in the flow, um, and then um, and then finally there's the dependent account stuff more in more detail as we talked about before, um, and how those flows work. For dependent accounts, um, and the consent screen, we'll be removing the best logo. So this will be a a wireframe as, as, as the previous bits, but this this gives you really all the, the key content 
um, that's that's in there. So if you yeah, if you if you do have a read through and have any questions on it or you know anything that is unclear um, from the refinement that's been done so far, um, I know there's already been some comments on there. So I'll be going through and um, and responding to the comments and, and fixing any issues that come up uh, or that have already been raised uh, in the document. Um, and uh, but I mean, hopefully these you know the substantive stuff is in there now. So that's that's it should be a case of you know if you're able to review it and um, shout if there's any issues basically. Um, so it should be stuff that's already been been pretty well uh, ironed out over the last few months uh, of this conversation. So that's. There you go. That's a very quick overview of all the things. Um, what do you guys think? You have any thoughts on on that? Just a quick initial, uh, initial casting an eye over it as you're going through it. Ran the areas of cancellations, and I think it was user friendly error messaging mm -hmm. on scenarios. That seems to have changed, not so much significantly, but there seems to be more depth in that now compared to maybe what there was before. So in the in the in the messages you've got there around the cancellations as such, I noticed that there seems to be some text. Is that is that an example of what text could be sent or is it something that's there already where where are we talking about sorry so in in we're running about the areas of late cancellation oh yeah you were showing some um this here yep so you, you see you've got there an abstract there at the bottom there so that sort of text mm -hmm. is there at the moment is that standard text or is that what an example of what we could contribute within the feed yes that's right it's a feed it, it would be within the feed text that you would you would add to the feed okay all right so that, that's probably no different than to before it's a bit more detail that's in there so phil that i think is where we'd be looking to use the data manager for certain scenarios that we've been passing into those particular points to make it customizable per customer if they wanted a different texting and more user friendly yeah we can look at that yeah either yeah. having a default and just apply it to all of them that have a tick against it or make them make, enter te text against every we can play around with that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, was it within the communication part as well that might seen something as well? I think it was where you were talking about there, Nick, in relation to, uh, I think, kind of any problems online type thing. So user friendly messages. Uh, this might, I know, I think I know what you mean. Uh, this is the. Um, uh, might be, yeah, it might be customer account where they've got problems with their account and those sorts of things. Might yes, be. that's right. Very good. Um, it is, yeah. Uh, is it the bit? Is it the bit where we where we talked about uh, unblock action? I feel like it's probably something like that. Yeah, it could well be. Let's see. Yeah, it's things oh. that would potentially stop them being able to make a booking, even though they're a member, basically, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, it is. Um, That's right. So unblock action, prerequisite action, and recommended action. Yeah, because we've got the standard restriction text at this moment in time, but it's whether we can actually provide the devil of the detail, because it's going to be quite expensive cost-wise and resource-wise to get that devil of detail, because that's a deep into logic. But it's not something really we want to share openly, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I think the idea is that this is an account level. So the way it works in Legend, if it's helpful, is it, it simply checks if there's a Oop. debt on the account. Oop. Some other guys, we don't worry about them okay uh yeah so check, check if there's a debt on the account check if there's you know there's three or four things that you know that will block bookings uh debt uh gem induction something else uh, and then just pipe them through to these uh as appropriate yeah, that's, that that is what's going to be the challenge i think we've discussed before we're already doing the logic to indicate to the feeds that there is a restriction not what the restriction is because there's a multitude of different types of restrictions Sorry, this is this is on the account rather than on a session. So this is just just is for a particular account saying what are the what are the things the impediments that that that, that, that specific account has that might prevent the person from doing things that they expect. So that so debt on the account is is an account level problem rather than a session level problem. Mm, it's all sort of related. You know, you could have an unpaid sale. You could have a subscription that doesn't let you in at that particular time. There's lots yeah. of various parameters. It could be a purchase not allowed. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, if it's uh, the um, the the error message that comes back from a failed booking could be quite generic. You know, purchase not allowed, or that could just be passed through. 
for a booking failure. Um, I think the, these these were kind of the preemptive, you know, common issues that the user might face that will prevent them from. Yeah, okay, um, we'll pick this one up with Debbie because this is this is an area that we've been through before, and as we know, as I sort of mentioned this, this is very deep logic with regards to um, what may be blocking their account. It's not a straightforward black or white. It's not straightforward. It's, yeah, yeah, might be that generic error message does the job. Um, you know, check on, <laughs> log into Gladstone and find out what's going on. Um, yeah. Which is the sort of thing we've got within the restricted text at the moment. You know, contact the, the leisure provider. Sure, sure. Okay, we'll put yeah. that one up with Debbie. Great. Right. Brilliant. And I'm, I'm very impressed, by the way, Andy, with you as well. I was skimming through, you picked up on some really key points there, <laughs> specific points. Um, well, mind is nothing in but OWS at the moment and OA. Bless oh, you. Excellent. Right. Okay. Yeah. You, you, you are the cause of my sleepless nights. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I am. That's, that was our ambition. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you for that. I'm going off sick again now. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Welcome back, isn't it? Um, so, uh, so yeah, Stephen, I guess, do you have any thoughts on your side from all of this? <clears throat> Not specifically, I haven't really kept up to date with the uh, developments. So I've been out of action on this for a number of months, but I will um, make sure this is shared around uh, and I'll make sure that we do internal review and comment as appropriate. I'm just keen to understand um, to what degree um, the consultation or the contributing contribute, contribute to, contribution from um, open play has been in this. It's listed in the top section, I think you put down as contributors or Consult, yeah, consultations. Um, don't know they've done any, if I, if I recall, but I could be wrong. Yes, that's true. We did. We have. We have only managed to engage them once on this uh, at the very mm. beginning, and we we got a sense from them of their structure of the the system and, and compatibility from that. So we've only got that high level engagement so far. We haven't got a deep engagement on, and certainly they haven't looked at the content in the detail. It is I, as far as I know. Um, so it would be good to get them. Okay. To well, I'll make sure it's shared, and they 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 know that we're at this stage, uh, and um, they obviously can then comment or contribute if they wish. Yeah, absolutely. Anything that they 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 yeah, all thoughts very well, uh, very um, welcome and <clears throat> are received. And of course, anything that they can uh, think of that they can simplify in here that you know that'd be an easy way of doing something. Be very welcome to hear that as well um so yeah that sounds good uh well great in that case it's um it's just a case of as you say getting it shared around um and uh making sure that everyone's had a chance to have a look at it um if you if you're able to i guess let us know when they've commented on on this uh or they've they've had a look is that the best way of doing it? I mean, the other way of doing it is we set a deadline and say by this date, but I don't know what's better. For, you know. I think we probably well, do a deadline. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think that's probably best. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure they're made aware of it today because um, <clears throat> this won't have been their focus, I'll show you. Um, so um, I'll make sure that they're aware of it and have the opportunity to comment. If you set a deadline, I think that's reasonable. Um, well, from our, Yeah, from our perspective, we'll do the same. We'll take this now as the... Um, the final final draft we'll see how we go um but yeah we'll take that and um we'll go through it and then we'll put through the recommendations or any anything that um of concern to yourselves but also to ea as our client as well that would be great amazing i think so. sorry the question so the question of a deadline then raises the question of what deadline um i'd be tempted to say a fortnight I was going to suggest probably a fortnight is more realistic than a week. Let's put it that way with other commitments that we've got currently in the diary at the moment. I think Stephen's on board with that as well. Yep. Okay. So that leaves... Yeah, I agree. That's reasonable. Yeah. Okay. It's a reasonable time frame. So that's the 23rd we'd be looking at then. Okay. <clears throat> Great. That's okay. Yeah. Perfect. So 23rd. Okay. Uh, Expect chasing emails at uh, some point closer to time then. Uh, I suppose we should also send it around to the to the W3C group, should we, Tim, the whole group, so that they've got it. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah. We'll link. Yeah. Okay, great. So yeah. two weeks um, and we'll, yeah. I look forward to the feedback. <laughs> this is when someone looks at it who hasn't looked at it. I'm expecting it more from open play side, to be fair. Yeah. Hasn't looked at it the whole time and they go, what on earth is this? But if we need another call, um, Stephen, when, when they do have a look at it, then obviously we can jump on another call and go through it with them, given that they haven't been party to the, the discussions. And we've all got a little bit of group thing going on here where we've all seemed to have come to a place where everyone's happy with it. Um, yeah. yeah, OK. That's helpful. I suspect you're right, though in your assessment of what will happen. <laughs> Fully expecting it. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, but let's plan. I mean, let's plan for that. We can keep next week's in. And if they, if they want to jump on and, and have a go, uh, you know, a run through of it with the deadline in mind, uh, we, can, we can do that next Thursday at the same time. Um, well, let's see what the initial reaction is, first of all, then I'll come back to you on that, Nick. Yeah, no problem. Okay, sure. right. Happy to spend the time. Great. Okay. Thank you all very much for joining the call. And we'll look forward to uh, a vigorous feedback session uh, next call. Talk to you all later. Thanks a lot. It'll all be right. fun. It'll all be fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Amazing. Popcorn. Right. <laughs> okay, guys. Thanks very much for your time. All right. Thanks, so much. Thanks. Bye now. Bye. Thanks, Thanks. all. Bye. Bye bye.